Hello, my name is Arvid from Team 18172 Uplift Robotics, and today I'm going to be showing you guys how to make a Minesweeper using code.org. So the first thing I'll do is I'll explain what Minesweeper is, uh, and I'll have a really quick demonstration. So here, you once you hit start, you can see that there's a grayed out field, uh, which is separated by a bunch of different squares. Uh, so after you click, a number will pop up, and that means that around this area, adjacent to this, there are two different mines, and if you hit a mine, you lose. So your goal is to try to hit squares that are not mines. Uh, so here it's complete luck because I just have to take a random guess. So I click this one and I got lucky. So now it's a one. So again, I have to take a completely random guess and I'll click here. And it's still another one. Um, but here you can see that it starts to fill up quite quickly. And so now I can start making actual uh, guesses. Uh, so with the one, we know that out of all four of these squares, there's only one mine, which means there's a 75% chance of any square not having a mine. If I click the square, okay, so now there's a two. And because there's a one here, we know for a fact that there's a mine here. Uh, but if I were to click this mine, I would lose, which I'll demonstrate here. You see, it prints game over. So now I'm going to show you guys how to make this code. So the first thing we want to do is have two variables, one for the rows and one for the columns. Uh, so for the Minesweeper, there's 10 rows and 10 columns, uh, which demonstrates the playing field. Now, the first thing you want to do is uh, I'll make your empty arrays. Uh, and so the reason that you want to make your arrays first is uh, so that you can fill them uh, later with the random generation of the different mines. So here, it's just we create new variables uh, and we set them equal to the rows that we defined earlier. Uh, and so then we use these super basic for loops and basically the way these work is we have four and then we'll create a new variable here we set it to equal uh, and so it's going to iterate through this as many times uh, until the r value is the same as this rows variable so we repeat this twice and we make the different arrays uh, and keep in mind it uses the parameters of the variables uh, which is pretty much used throughout the entire code so now we try to make the field which is the game area so you can see for the canvas size uh so we have a bunch of new variables and this, these variables just take uh the canvas size divided by the columns just to know how big they should make each square and then we have the code.org uh, draw world function and it again has the same for loops uh, these are called nested for loops which you use uh, while making arrays uh, where you have one for loop for the rows and then inside of that you have another for loop for columns uh, and so now uh, inside this columns uh, we use the array world rc so it's going to iterate through the first for loop and then after it's done doing the first iteration of the column loop, it's going to jump up to increase uh, through the next row and it'll keep going infinitely or until uh, it runs out of array numbers uh, and so uh, while this can look quite intimidating, it's actually not that intimidating. Uh, all this means is RGB 000 is just the color black. Uh, and stroke is just, there's a couple different uh, code.org key terms uh, that you can learn with practice. And uh, fill just fills a square and stroke is just a line. Uh, so here we have a rectangle and we set uh, the parameters of rectangle, uh, which is like the length and the width. Uh, equal to uh, c, which is uh, the variable that we created here in the nested loop, uh, times the cell size, uh, which again we explained here was canvas size divided by rows, uh, and then grid size and uh, grid size again, uh, because it's a rectangle, so you need four parameters. And then we're going to repeat this again, a very similar code, uh, but this time it's going to detect if there's a mine. Uh, and so basically what this means is that for the mine, uh, if if uh, the square has a mine, it's going to make sure that the square is red, so that if the player clicks on it, it's going to turn red, uh, so that you'll lose. But obviously you have to add some things uh, so that the player doesn't know that it's red. So then we also have an if, and it says if game over, so if the player ever clicks uh, the mine, uh, it's gonna it's gonna print out the game over text. So then we make a small function called Q, uh, which just uses this dot elements, which you can look uh, further into. Uh, this is just a very specific uh, for this case scenario. 
and then we use nq, which is it's a sorting method. Uh, again, it's it's used in code.org, but it's it's not necessary for most codes. Um, we also use dq, which is the opposite of nq, but but these aren't really important. Uh, and then uh, we use the dot length to check the length of the array, uh, and so we check that it's not equal to zero, and then we return uh, the uh, the list. And so again, it shows a couple of things, and then after that we have a function uh, that checks uh, the world and uh, these just are and boolean so it'll check that if if uh, the rows are greater than zero and the rows are less than the max number of rows and the columns are less or greater than zero and the columns are less than the max rows then it'll return to and otherwise in all the other scenarios it'll return false and so the next thing is we have to count the my neighbors, uh, which basically means when you're playing the game, uh, you obviously want it to calculate the number of mines that are in the direct vicinity. So the way you're going to do that uh, is it's going to it's going to detect all around it. So this would be negative one on the x, so directly to the left. This would be one comma zero, which is directly to the right, and then we have. 0 comma negative 1 which is directly on the bottom and you just repeat this for all of the coordinates that are directly surrounding it and then we use another thing called delta and then if it determines that there is a mine within this uh, vicinity uh, it's going to add one to this variable that we create called number of mine very number of mine neighbors and it's going to go through every every possible uh, square that's in adjacent to it to determine if there's a mine the next thing you want to do is create the actual mines, um, as well as uh, having another function that adds the neighbors. Uh, and so you'll see that we have random gen generation here. Um, in order to make this a game, you obviously have to have the computer randomly generated so the player doesn't know where the mines are, uh, which is basically all that this means. So we have again the nested loops, uh, and so we have the, uh, the arrays here just calling the arrays and we repeat for j and so basically all of this all this does is it's going to randomly generate it's going to randomly pick where in the array uh, the mines are going to go so the next thing we're going to do is just there's a couple more uh, we're going to call all of the functions that we explained earlier and then we're going to have the uncover function uh, as well as the draw function and these are just going to make it so that uh, the player can actually play on uh, the field uh, and so we have a couple arrays, and we have, um, we have. It's mainly made up of arrays. We again use nq, uh, and so then here you can see that we're just uh, we're having a call to draw a world. So this is going to start all the game. So I can start with a demonstration here of how the code works. So again, we have one. So what this means is that it's currently calling a couple different functions. Uh, it called the count my neighbors. So it saw for each of these different squares, there's one of these squares has a neighbor. So if we click a random one, uh, I'm going to try to lose. You see how it's game over. Uh, so now it's calling uh, the function. Put it. Okay, so here uh, it's determined that I had game over because I clicked on the red, the red tile. And because of that, it's going to print the game over. So that re that's really all there is to it. It's uh, mainly just uh, the creation of a couple different arrays. Uh, and so uh, it's the creation of a couple different arrays, uh, the usage of uh, of nested loops. Uh, there's a couple different uh, existing libraries and just a little bit of practice with code.org and eventually you'll be able to make a mine uh, sweeper game of your own. Thank you for watching.